Oh, hey guys, what's going on? I'm back. Uh, video two from the basement, from quarantine zone, in my comfy chair. Um, the last video was the review of the uh, Mattel 11-inch vinyl and plush child, the child, uh, Baby Yoda, uh, which to this day is probably the best toy I think I've ever seen. It's just beautiful. Oh, pardon me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the Hot Topic exclusive exclusive uh papa nile figure uh the reason i do that in air quotes is because i just found out that in australia you get it from not hot topic and instead of having uh what i'll show you is the exclusive hot topic sticker that says exclusively at hot topic it just says special edition on it it's the exact same fucking thing so the exclusivity bullshit so you lied so it, it came to me in this uh it, ironically they box the box in a box which i like so, Hot Topic, thumbs up on your shipping. Very quality shipping. Appreciate that. I don't like Funko Pops. I don't collect them. Um, now, let me rephrase that. The appeal of Funko Pop escapes me. Um, I enjoy getting things that have no other iteration that I always wanted. Like when Baby Groot came out, I got my wife a Baby Groot Funko Pop. And then when the dancing baby group came out in like Walgreens, I immediately bought that and I haven't looked at the Funko Pop since. It's sitting somewhere. And I haven't bought a single pop since then. Not because I think they're poor quality or I don't get the collectible aspect of it. It's just not something I'm into. Um, but there are certain characters I feel that as a pop lend itself to that style and I can see myself getting them. Ash vs. Evil Dead, for example. I could see myself having an Ash pop. Um, but when it comes to Ghost, there's very, very little in terms of merchandise, because it's a musical band. Um, I do collect what I can, where I can. Um, my mic stand is currently sporting <laughs> the Grucifix. Um, but... I'm a big fan of Papa Nile <laughs> and uh, Papa Emeritus Zero um, because of the eight-part miniseries that Ghost put out on their YouTube channel. Uh, I've never seen a band do something like that before and have a character and a story that's almost completely independent of the music in and of itself. You know, the, the character of Papa Nile did come out on stage, play the saxophone during the Cardinal Copia era, uh, for Miasma, um, which I believe was only on the pre kill tour. I don't even know if he toured and showed up in uh, the original run. Was it just a tour named Death or the tour before that? I mean, I know it was album four that, because obviously he kills, he takes Papa Three off stage, comes out and is debuted and says that, you know, it's the Middle Ages again. And, uh, and then we get the miniseries and then prequel comes out. And the tour starts with Copia and everything. And so I just don't remember if it was all the tours associated with Prequel or if it was just a tour named Death. Uh, I'd have to look. I'd have to research it. I don't really remember. But there isn't really any Papa merch for Papa Nile. And I think he's the funniest character. I love the way he says, Seaster. And he's father's father's father. His father. Like, the guy playing him is hysterical. And for those who don't know, there are three different <laughs> Papa Niles. There's young Papa Nile, and we all know that actor. Um, he appears in the Kiss the Go-Goat video. He appears in Dance Macabre. Um, he appears in one of the episodes when Papa remembers that, you know, in his youth, and he's speaking to, you know, um, Seaster. And then there's the the old man actor who plays Papa in the, that eight-part series and did the uh, handing out the the reissue of Seven Inches of Satanic Panic and all that. And I love that character. I love that man playing that character. And then there's one who's on tour, which may be the same actor as the young one. I actually don't know that. Who wears a uh, silicon mask as Papa Nile performing the saxophone. That's not the older gentleman. That's somebody else. But I love the look of Papa Zero. I love the concept that as he became ill and incapable of fronting the band, he passed it off to his sons. And so he's still there. He's still running the church, so to speak. And, you know, he elevated his bloodline to the emeritus position. Is it emeritus or emeritus? Emeritus? I've never actually heard somebody say it correctly. I've only ever read the word. 
Interesting. I wonder. If, if you want to comment below and tell me with the pronunciation guide how to actually say emeritus, emeritus, em emeritus, I don't really know where the emphasis and the syllables go. Uh, I don't know the phonetic pronunciation of the name. I've never heard someone say it. Uh, except for Chris Jericho when he introduced him at the Golden Gods. Um, but Papa Nile's wardrobe is gorgeous. Um, I believe it was Black Majesty who made that as well. Um, I'm told that Trick or Treat Studios is coming out with a miter, which I will absolutely get. <laughs> and uh, maybe more, who knows. Uh, I'm flirting with the idea of delving into the financial commitment of making a Papa Nile. <sighs> it would not be easy. Um, so much fabric and things that you have to deal with, but we'll see. But anyway, let's look at the pop. Um, so as you unbox the pop, you can see Pop Rocks Ghost logo in maroon and uh, old gold, which is not actually a gold color. Coming from Georgia Tech, I know old gold, and that's old gold. Uh, and it's number 169. Um, the back showcases... The older actor, the, the gentleman from the eight-part miniseries who plays Papa Nile, um, standing next to the Funko. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a Hot Topic exclusive sticker on it, which means that in America, you're not going to get this sold anywhere except at a Hot Topic. Uh, however, as I've also mentioned, if you get yours in Australia, apparently... That is a gold foil special edition sticker that does not say Hot Topic on it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. How could it be an exclusive if it's not exclusive? Maybe it's just exclusive in America, or maybe they just had extra stickers and they needed to put it on something. Either way, I bought mine from HotTopic.com. Um, Hot Topic and I have not seen eye to eye on fashion for a long time, but that's because I am old. I am not who they cater to anymore. But when I was a young man and Trip was the major clothing supplier and I was into the goth scene, which I really never got out of. It's just too annoying to put on that makeup and take it off every day. It's very cumbersome. So I don't put it on and the nail polish and all that. It's very, it's very tiring. Uh, but I still love goth fashion, even though that's kind of fallen to the wayside and Hot Topic no longer embraces that. That's what got me into it. So I've supported them on and off for a long time. Plus, every once in a while, they do get a really cool replica of something that I want. Hmm, pardon me. So the Papa Nile figure um, comes with a standard pop box. It is referred to as Papa Nile, not Papa Emeritus Zero or Emeritus. Like I said, I don't actually know how to say it. Um, so they refer to it as Papa Nile. It's called Papa Nile. So some people have asked uh, online, I've noticed, is it Papa Nil as in zero? Because Nil is a synonym for zero in certain instances. And uh, is he referred to as just Papa Zero, Papa Nil, or is it Papa Nile, Nihil, you know, obviously being a throw to things like nihilism, which is very big in black metal and things like that. So it's kind of an interesting debate online I've seen from a lot of ghost fans as to what this guy's name is. But clearly, in print, it's Papa Nile, and it's an officially licensed ghost item. So I guess it's Nile, and I guess that's the preferred name. Um, I have done a fan book for ghosts that I will debut in a later video here uh, called the... Um, um, uh, Verus ex verbum, which is just the true words of ghost. So it's verum ex verbus ghost. Uh, and I'll show you what that is and what, why I made that in a later video. Uh, that'll debut later on. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be a, hopefully a series of videos and hopefully you'll get some, you'll get a kick out of it. Um, but so I'm not a keep it in the box kind of guy. I don't collect boxes of anything. Um, although I must say when it came to the child from the Mandalorian, I did keep that box because it was a very cool way to do the packaging, and I wish more people would put effort into their packaging. I understand that the main thing with Funko Pop is you want to stack them, so of course you always have the same box. So I get that, but as a result, that means I don't care for the box. So I take it out of the box, and I might even keep mine in, in a box. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, and then it has the fold-up piece. That's pretty standard. And then we take out Papa. And we take a look at Papa. Now, one of the things is I have heavily researched Papa Nile's costume, so I can speak to accuracy and inaccuracy on this. So the first thing we see is the face paint and the fact that he's blind. 
This is where a Funko Pop figure actually lends itself to accuracy, because I hate that they don't have eyes. Eyes are often the most compelling aspect of a character, in my opinion. So to have a series of toys where there are no eyes, really, just big black white shark eyes, takes away some of the creativity, I think, and some of the character is lost because of that. But in this instance, Papa Niles got big old white eyes because he's supposed to be blind, and I think it actually lends itself to this style. So that's the other reason I picked this Papa up because I think it actually works as a Funko. The crucifix on top is gold. It is that standard uh, G font. I, I forgot the name of the font of the G. I used to know, but I forgot. Uh, with the white embroidery around it, sitting on the red. Um, now, the white has a very nice piece of embellishment, and if you really look at it, it is actually pretty similar to the embroidery on Papa Niles' miter. So if you look, for instance, in the corner here, and the corner here, you see a figure kneeling and praying. That's actually accurate to the miter. Uh, the only difference is that it is, it is gold uh, embroidery on the miter. So what that means, because this is actually elevated, I could go over it with a light gold uh, brush and customize this if I really wanted to. Um, as we look into the detail on the miter itself, the detail of the crucifix, those details do both appear on the miter. That's very cool. And the zigzag style pattern is pretty similar. So as far as the look of the miter so far, not bad. Here's where they lose me on the miter. On the back, you do have... Uh, mm, it's trying to focus on me, sorry. You do have... Uh, accurate ghost symbols at the bottom, but then it has the stripes and everything up the top. That is not accurate to his miter. Uh, but I do enjoy it. Um, and it looks like it's the double G, it's the double build, double bar G from, uh, I believe it was utilized in the second album heavily, but third album? Meliora maybe? You know what? I actually don't remember. Are you going to get yelled at for that? But overall, um, very good job on the head and the miter. Really like it. There's also very subtle weathering around the outside of the makeup, which is kind of cool. Um, so not too bad there. Now the robe. Chest piece. It, do, it does really show... I don't even know how close I can get that. Let's see. There we go. So actually, if you look at that, that artwork is pretty close. It does have the uh, cross of Lucifer on the neck, which is accurate, but it's not yellowed out like it should be. Uh, the gold trim of the, um, it begins with a C, I forgot the name of it, um, but the, the, the part that lays over the shoulders, uh, Chossable, I think it is, the, his vestment, essentially, does have the red on the inside, the white on the outside with the gold trim, and then the gold trim being up from outside of that, and then the sleeves of the under robe do have the same trim, uh, and again, this piece right under here is his actual Chossable still there that he's he's folded his arms over so it's draped down and he's folded his arms over <coughs> But if he took it out it would just be a big semicircle So that looks pretty accurate um, And then of course the under the chasuble is the the robe itself, which has the same Symbols and is two major symbols in the in the trim which do match symbols in the miter and it's Looks like it is accurate. It is the diamond-shaped one and then the circular uh, G. And then, of course, little crosses of Lucifer show up here and there. That's really the one thing missing from the G up top is the little crop Lucifer around the outside. So, Papa Nile as a Funko, really good. Also really enjoy that it's not a bobblehead. Uh, the Baby Groot one I got was a bobblehead. So, I don't know how many Pops are bobbleheads and not. Uh, as I said, I don't collect them. Um, but I like that. Now... Gripes with the paint. Hands. If we zoom in here and I move my head so you can see it. There is a little bit of imperfection on the hands. That will have to be addressed. I will have to go in and deal with that. But I have to say, as far as bad paint jobs go, it doesn't qualify. It is a good paint job. They did a good job with this. Um, Funko did a very good job. There's very, very little bleeding or overlay on paint, making it multiple pieces and putting it together probably assists with that, but even on the body, they did a very good job. Looks like the hands and this lower body is a separate piece from the chasuble, and they uh, insert, 
And then the bottom piece, after the pour, they have their custom stamp or whatever you want to call it. I don't really know what you call it. Let's see if I can get it to focus. As long as I'm in the shot, it won't focus. So you can see what's going on there. Just standard stamp. Top of the miter, nothing special there. Um, yeah, really cool, really good job with Papa Nile Funko. Um, I enjoy this. I will not be picking up any of the other Papa, uh, Papa ones. Uh, I could see there could I could see picking up a series of ghouls if they do that. Um, that would be kind of cool. The series of masks they've done over the years and having like an evolution of the nameless ghouls over the years. Uh, but I'd be more, more inclined to just pick up the real helmets and masks and put them on my wall or something. So, but I just really thought Papa Nile as a Funko Pop works. He's, he's kind of adorable. So he deserves an adorable figure. So I like it and I, I approve of it. So on a scale of one to 10, it's a Funko Pop. So it's not going to get higher than a seven for me uh, because mm, what are you doing with a pop? But um, as far as pops go, it's a really nice pop. I, I think it's a good paint job, um, little, little white speck over here, a little imperfection there, a little bubble here. Overall, I'd say as far as figures go and collectibles go, like 6.5 out of 10, just because I feel that, like I said, this could have been golded out the way it should have been in the miter. Uh, I don't really have any other gripes. I love the detail of the chest symbol of the two fighting demons. That's fantastic. The inclusion of the little cross of Lucifer up top uh, is fantastic. Um, I like that they used the gold paint and they did a good job with it. Few things that do bother me are why, for example, on this side of the head, the symbols come all the way around. On this side, they do not. Why would that be there and that not be there? So that's a that's an interesting discrepancy. I'm not really sure about that. I did get two. One is for a friend of mine. I may open up his and see if that's a defect or if that's just the way they printed them. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't see the... I still don't see the appeal of collecting them. Um, but definitely some upgrades could be done to it, uh, some accuracy things could be improved, but it's a Papa Nile figure, and if you're into Papa Nile, why wouldn't you want one? And I did see some other Papa Nile figures coming out. I don't know if I'll be picking those up because of what they tend to charge for them, but very interesting. I'd be curious to see what those look like. Uh, I believe they're from White Knuckle. Uh, but yeah, overall, I would say, you know, 6, 6.5 out of 10. Not, not a, nothing to blow you away, but if you love Papa Nile, you should have one. If you're not into Papa Nile, you're just into Ghost in general, and you're just a Ghost fan, I could see you skipping this. Uh, I don't see how this would make you feel more invested in your fandom. Uh, now, if you're doing it to show off to other people by, like, saying, like, look how much shit I got, then knock yourself out. It's, it's a cheap price tag. But if you're a pop collector, again, unless you're into Ghost, I wouldn't see the reason to pick up a Nile. But, like I said, if you're into fan, if you are a Ghost fan, and you are a Papa fan, and you're a fan of the story, and you're a fan of Papa Nile, then you should have this, because there isn't much Papa merch out there. So, I like it. I say if you are, again, a Ghost fan and a Papa fan, then you should pick that up. But if you're just your average Ghost fan, or your average uh, Funko collector, I think this is probably a pass for anybody. Um, yeah, so that's what I think of this. Uh, I'm still happy with the purchase, and I like it. And I'm going to continue to display it somewhere. <laughs> and maybe it'll make an appearance in a later video. Uh, maybe not. We'll see. But thanks for hanging out with me. I don't have anything else to review for a bit. Um, well, actually, that's not true. Next week, I'll have quite a bit to review. But next week is May the 4th. And I will be um, dressing up for that. Doing what? I have no idea. I may just be marching around my neighborhood as Darth Vader and Kylo Ren. I really don't know. But... I finally have a gorgeous Vader costume, which I've wanted my whole life, and now May the 4th is coming up, and I have the ability to dress up like Darth Vader and go march around my neighborhood as Darth Vader, which is something I've always wanted to do. <laughs> so I may just do that amidst quarantine for no other reason than I can. <laughs>